Hey y'all, it's Lena to intro our podcast episode with Javiera Lopez. Javiera is known for her short and visually captivating animations. Recently, I was able to sit down with Javiera over Zoom and learn more about her, her work, and her many inspirations. From growing up in Chile, her deep connections with nature and the cycles of the moon, as well as her claim to artistic fame on Vine. I think Javiera will be a fantastic inspiration for us all on how we can connect our everyday lives with nature. Make sure to follow Javiera on Instagram at Javiera Lopez and on Twitter at Javiera Lopez. Hello. Thank you so much for joining today. I'm sorry I was late. No, no, no worries. Don't worry about it at all. Um, how are you today? Oh, it's been a very busy, crazy week, but I'm okay. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good to hear. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. It's it's pretty gray here today. Not a lot of sunshine. So, Where are you? I'm in Northern California. Oh. Yeah, it's usually pretty gray in the mornings, but then then it gets a bit better. So <laughs> if you would like to show your journal and just like your thought process through it, um, if that's like an inspiration for also your animations, like just talking. So, um, usually what happens is that um, I see something like, let's say, for the strawberry. Did you see the strawberry? Yes, I did. Yeah, the strawberry is like, I started feeling that everything in nature had like eyes. Mm. Like when you change, like when passive things become the subject, mm-hmm. instead of you being the subject that is looking outside, it's like things are looking at you and watching you, sort of that feeling. And I remember it was, uh, was it summer? I don't know. But I remember looking at a strawberry and saying, like, oh, this could be tiny little eyes, and how do I move them? And then it's always like a conversation because here I start with the ideas, and then, like, in the making of the ideas, mm-hmm. um, things change a little bit. It's yeah. like I am the cousin of mm-hmm. what I usually thought. Mm-hmm. So, do you usually start with like, an original image and then it, it kind of takes its own form from there and moves and changes. Yeah, for example, here is another one. It's like this weird thing I did. I, I don't think if you saw it. It's mm-hmm. one of my recent one. And so I started with that and then I did this other one. So I I thought like I should morph one into the other. Mm-hmm. It's just, it always, always starts here with a drawing. Hold on, let me see if I find something more. Here are more examples of things that I did. Like here was the thing about the eyes and the strawberry. Mm-hmm. So, is, uh, is nature something that you often try to kind of bring yeah. into your work? Yeah. Would you like to talk a bit about more more of that, like your inspiration through nature, or if you're connected to nature? And it's um, I think that many of our problems as humans are because uh, we're not connected enough to not only nature but each other or the seasons. So I always I have I'm very sensitive to smells and visually to flavors. And so I, I don't feel well when I'm very disconnected from everything. And so I started learning about the cycles of the moon and what's going on in the sky, not just like astrology, but also uh, how does, I don't know, how can I relate to all these things that are going on outside of me, right? Mm-hmm. And it's good because um, I started having moments, like it, it, it gets into a ritual in a way, like this is the right moment to do this and this is the right moment to do that because you see what's going on outside and you connect to that. Mm-hmm. And so, and also, I mean, all the shapes and flavors and like the flowers, like 
are they trying to tell me? I, are they trying to tell me something like how we are different shapes or the insects? And usually, what I do is I just feel that something gets my attention a lot, and I I wouldn't say I get obsessed, but it's like I, there's something about that, and I do something about it. Like I don't know the caterpillar I did, and then I find out why I wasn't doing that. Like in, in retrospective. So I just, usually I go with the flow with everything I'm interested in. Like I just, I just do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's, I'm, I'm not usually thinking about like being relatable or being meaningful for other people. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me, it's a very interesting way to live. Yeah. I so I'm in love with this thing, so I'm going to investigate it and draw it and do something about it. So yeah, that's what I usually do. Yeah, it seems like it, it um kind of keeps the passion alive in your work in a sense where where you're really just focusing on the things that you love and and creating that into something instead of uh, just creating it for others, which is really cool. Yeah, I mean, and also it's um, I live in Chile, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, I don't know where I read this, but it was a painter uh, who, I don't know, was trying to be successful in Europe, let's say, and he was Latin American, or she. Mm -hmm. And uh, some older painter told her, like, paint your town, Mm -hmm. like, paint what you really are, what you really see. Mm -hmm. And so I think the only way to kind of connect with other people is talking about exactly what's inside of my brain. Yeah. Like, no judgments. Yeah. You know? Just what so I that's my God. <laughs> I, I love it. It's amazing. It's kind of just whatever comes to you is is what you create, which I think is so important in a lot of artists. Um kind of just last question about about your process and and um figuring out where you start. So you know, you say that um, it's kind of you just create what comes to you and, and you go with the flow. Um, do you ever have like a timeline of wanting to create things? So is it usually like you see something physical in the world and then is it like you think about it, you think about it, do you draw it first or is it something you try to animate first? Like how does how does that work? Is there usually a timeline? For example, uh, right now, because also I see my little things, especially the self-portraits, and mm-hmm. it's like, Something I wish for myself, like let's say I'm going through a tough situation that I am, and like I wish for myself to be able to not only be resilient, but like to be flexible, like to be like water. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm thinking right now. And so um, I started to do this real drawing. Amazing. And so what I'm going to do with this is um, I, I also I practice yoga. I am a yoga teacher. Yeah, I don't know about that. I study. And so um, I'm thinking about, for example, what am I going to do with this? So I, I, it's an animation. So I'm going to do a weird yoga poses for some of the frames mm-hmm. as a reference. And then I'm going to do all the in-betweens to make it seem like the body is fluid, like it's liquid and like, I don't know, a snake or mm-hmm. a water snake. And so that's what I have in mind. And now it's like all the process that is usually fun where I do all the weird things in front of the camera and then I try to figure out how am I going to do it technically. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, I draw everything. Drawing is my thing. But um, at the same time, um, sometimes with animation there are more complex things that, I have this idea on my mind mm-hmm. of what I want, and sometimes it's difficult technically, so I figure out, and then the idea starts changing, and you know, mm-hmm. I end up with something sometimes a little different. Yeah. But uh, how it works. Yeah. I so think you- it's fun. Yeah. It's like that's what I want for myself right now. That's awesome. And and you mentioned the camera. So um, when you're doing more more complex pieces, is it, is it often you move in the camera or like do a video and try to recreate that and trace that when you can't necessarily just build it yourself? 
Oh yeah, I used uh, for sure. I wrote the book a little bit mm-hmm. always because it's a uh, uh, a reference. But I mix all that with three uh, to the animation. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, what what softwares do you use for the for the animations usually? Um, I used to use the Adobe Suite. Oh uh, yes, yeah, I know. But now I since corporate. Mm-hmm. Added the timeline. It's mm-hmm. so fun. Really? <laughs> and I started with pen and paper. And yeah. It's done. Then um, I started doing this thing where uh, it's a, I don't know someone very technical would laugh at me, but I literally I do the video, then I draw a little bit, then I do something in After Effects, then I draw again, and it's like I I juggle. Yeah. And, it's like my own thing that probably takes much time. Okay, <laughs> hey, it's it, it's what works, so it's perfect. Yeah, that's really amazing. Um, mm-hmm. but would you be comfortable maybe sending um, some photos of your journals with uh, your art with your work in your presentation? Sure. Yeah, just to add and and have I that. Know, I also make these uh, these things for my stories. I don't know if you've seen them, but it's mm-hmm. all the frames of animation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. So I think some of that too because it speaks about the process and yeah. uh, and also I would like to add that uh, I'm always doing lots of other things but I don't necessarily publish them. Yeah. Could you tell so me about that? that those are embroidery. Mm-hmm. I, I want to make an animation of that is hard feeding but it's all embroidery so it's really has lots of different things. And that is uh, watercolor, no, ink. And, and I have this thing that I did recently, and it's Sharpies. Mm-hmm. It's my mom's school records. Oh, that's so amazing. Like, she was a very good student. Yeah. And so her school records with all the, and that's why I did this. Mm-hmm. So beautiful! Wow. So, so you, there are a lot of different kind of um, products that you like to use besides just like doing things on the computer as well. Um, if, yeah, uh, I feel like the uh, other favorite things of yours besides animation, and and if you could go into that a bit. Um, everything art. Like I do makeup. I do hair. I love hair. Like, yeah. I would be that's yes, for sure. I do braids. Like a long time ago, I did this project where I had like an alphabet with braids, mm-hmm. with different braids. Mm-hmm. And so I would write things. And I don't know, I would like to do everything. I really like, lately, especially with the pandemic and everything, I feel like life is so short and I want to do so many things. Mm-hmm. Like I do music for the music for all my animation pieces. Yeah, I've seen that. And, and yeah, I would like to make music and make jewelry and act everything and under the sun. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. So I yeah. hope I get to do everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I hope the same for you as well. <laughs> it's very inspiring. Yeah, just I feel like also the the pandemic has has granted um, that ability to really like try new things. It it gives an individual time to like to find a new product that they like and experiment with it and work with it. And so, yeah, I'm happy to hear that, that you've done that too and take inspiration uh, from other aspects of life as well and other, other mediums and forms is really amazing. Also about the uh, traditional medium, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I don't know, it's like the digital medium. Mm-hmm. Like, I used to do everything in paper but then I realized that I was spending because each animation is a hundred drawings, so I was spending paper crazy, and I didn't have words to store it. Mm-hmm. And so I started doing everything digitally, and it's comfortable, it's cool, but I feel like it loses something. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm drawing now in my journal, and I do this properly gesture. Mm-hmm. And like no, and and I love to like. Uh, to have mistakes and to experiment with different tangible things because otherwise it feels disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> Again, 
Yeah. Do do you feel that um obviously you're pretty known for your digital work, but do you feel like like you've said it's created like a disconnect sometimes between between your inspiration because you don't always have that that pen and paper feeling or that uh, that pencil and paper feeling with you? No, because I do it all the time. I mean the the product, the thing that you see is a result of a process that I do here and uh, I don't feel this kind of thing at all, but it happens to me that sometimes I'm working on a project, so I'm working on corporate, let's say, for a week, and then I try to go back to Baker and I start with the gesture, and I'm like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes a moment. But, but all, uh, I don't know, I'm, I do a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Yeah. Good. And also, it's digital is good because I live in Chile, you know, like if I did uh, physical, tangible things, like, it would be a nightmare to see. <laughs> <laughs> like, in three months, you have <laughs> Yeah, very true. It take, definitely takes longer when you're doing physical, physical pen and paper drawings and innovations. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Um, do you have any other uh, comments that you'd like to make about your work or yourself or things you'd like people to know or a message you'd like to send um, to young girls or other women trying to get into the arts before? Uh, just to you, like, you're so short. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, I, it, it took me a while to, and I actually, um, living in Chile, I tried to have, like, a, a career in real life, like, locally, mm-hmm. and it was very difficult. And I had to go through a lot and being at really bad jobs and, you know, and I, I ended up uh, deciding whether I, I was going to go to grad school or I was going to go to yoga school. Mm-hmm. And I went to grad school and I got a little bit disappointed. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this other thing. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about uh, yoga and about studying it was um, I had to go back to myself. Mm-hmm. I, it's like, who are you? Mm-hmm. And so I, the more and more I discovered that uh, the more authentic you are, mm-hmm. it's like things go better for you in every way. I mean, you go through kind of bad moments because not not everybody likes the truth, but mm-hmm. it's like a small price to pay. So um, I think that, um, and I talk to a lot of teenagers because uh, I don't know, I want everybody to do creative work and also to not be afraid of being themselves, whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it definitely means something different to everybody. Being being themselves is, is totally different. There's a huge scale. So, yeah, that's really inspiring. But uh, I, mean, I think um, when you take a look at your culture, your family, everything from a certain distance, mm-hmm. and you start that process of uh, se- separating what belongs to you and what doesn't, and you know, like finding out who you are. Mm-hmm. I think it's a it's a beautiful process, and and it's a nice way to live because I don't know, living according to the culture or society or whatever. It's yeah. it's never a good idea. Yeah. Not worth it. <laughs> Never a good idea. I agree. Listening to yourself, being authentically true to yourself and what you believe and holding on to those core values. Is, yeah. Very good message. I like that message. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so, so much for joining the Zoom and talking with a girl and telling us about about yourself and your beliefs and your processes. It's really amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you.